Yeah, you don't know nothing about what, Mark what, Freeland. What's your name? You don't know. My name is Michael Kotis. Michael. You know, I lived with Freeland for two years. It was two years, but maybe. He had extremely influence in my life, and um, I want to I want to share that with with you people. We were in New York City in uh, 82, 83. You know, back in those days, you know, Dance Terry was open, Limelight, Freeland was with uh, our daughter's wedding. It, w it was kind of wild and weird and creepy. This is God's awful truth. Uh, put this down in the Freeland Memorial books. The night that he took spray paint and made like this boy George on a side of a van like eight foot high within five seconds through the next days we were like talking about it and seeing the van drive around the boy George graffiti on it. it was hysterical and the you know I watched him do the boy George thing like and it looked exactly like boy George and you know it, it was great. It was a masterpiece. The weird thing was when I got to New York and Mark bumped into me on the fr in the front of my building on Park Avenue South, 20th Street, and he said, what are you doing here? I said, I live here. He goes, what do you mean? I said, he goes, because he was talking to Moto, and Moto lived in the same building. But anyway, I, I saw you in Japan, right? Yeah. Remember? And I saw Moto when I was there, remember? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I only knew Moto because of Mark. I, I told Moto, I said, you know, I sent him the, the memorial thing, and, you know, he said, he said it was so sad that Mark's dead. You know, he, you know I, I think I was his only connection through the people that we know to Moto. And Moto was like, he expressed his, um, his sorrow. The thing that I think that Moto liked about Mark was that um, Moto didn't speak that much English, but Mark was somebody that he could, could communicate with, you know, easily on an artistic level. So, you know, Moto really liked Mark just because Mark could um, make him real, make him feel New York and like he would go out with him and stuff and he, he could like transfer the, the communication from Mark. At one point in the in the 80s, I was I was involved with the University of Buffalo and Dantec Dynamics, which was a company I worked for, to um, um, arrange entertainment for the Thursday night slot of the banquet. And I thought, well, you know, Mark Freeland and and Dave Kane, Electronics, if they would do it, would be fantastic entertainment for these guys. We did like a pre preliminary entertainment, which with me doing some slides and that actually Mark had done for me called the correct use of tools. Like I have the entire collection. I have the biggest collection of Freeland artwork of anybody in the world. Seriously, in Tucson, Arizona, I have like 50, 60 paintings in Mark, of Mark, including his last one, by the way, only because I'm one of his best friends. I just want to make that clear because I love Mark like a brother. It comes down to the, the, the last minute. I have like 300 scientists and engineers and students on my back ready for this performance. Mark tells me Kane canceled out. I said, what do you want to do? And he said, I can do it myself. So he, he hauled in a bunch of televisions. He put a bunch of TV sets in front of the band, I mean, in front of himself, and did like David Bowie and Lou Reed songs. And, and the whole time I was sitting next to Lynn Herzog saying, I'm finished, my career is over. Oh my God, what have I done? And then when I finally like, came to several like hours later, there was 40 people on the dance floor dancing wildly while Freeland played the guitar for like three hours, the third hour in a row. Everybody loved it. Unbelievable.